this video, I want to look at some tips that are going to help you build robust models within the solid edge ordered environment. This is um, not always an easy thing to do because you're never quite sure what changes are going to get thrust upon you. But hopefully some of these ideas will help build robust models. So the first thing to do is to plan your work. Remember, we are modeling and not drawing. So some of the things that you can work on identify important datums, which should be tied to reference planes. So basically what this means is that you are working and building the model from the most sensible position. You should also imagine the basic set of features which will define the part and hopefully anticipate what changes are likely to come your way. Look for any use of symmetry. Where possible, use primary reference planes when creating new features. And where possible, use primary reference planes for dimensioning from. And then the back burner syndrome. Don't use confusing techniques that is likely to cause you problems when you come back to it six months to a year down the track. So let's look at some examples of what we were just talking about. Um, so here's, here's, here's an example of a model. Um, you look at it and decide where you want to go with it, which is the most important feature. So obviously this, this, this is the main face part that you want to build. So ideally you'd want to have the top face of here sitting right on this reference plane up here. Um, and as you can see, we've, we've sort of not really got anywhere near that. Um, it's also um, obvious that you can do this as a revolve protrusion. And in that case, um, we are looking at the right sort of orientation because we've got the line of symmetry right down the middle. And um, symmetry was another one of those features that we were looking at for trying to decide before we start modeling. Sketches are another area where you can get yourself into quite a bit of trouble. So let's look at some of the problems. You want to try and keep your sketches as simple as possible. The more detailed you make the sketch, the harder it is to constrain. You're much better off to make more features with more simple geometry. Use relationships to help control the geometry. Be careful to link relationships to the correct elements. So um, if you're going to sort of edit, trim, etc. Um, on, a, on an element, you want to make sure that what you've connected to is going to still be there after the edit. You can also use the Alt key to suppress unwanted relationships when you're moving over so it doesn't recognize them. You also need to realize that not all relationships are equal. Connect and align relationships are nearly bulletproof, so try and work with those as often as possible. Symmetric relationships are probably the most fragile, so only use them when you really need to. You can potentially use um, construction geometry to build that instead of using the symmetric relationship. And the order of the construction, i.e. the first thing that you uh, assign, um, can have a bearing on the way that, that it behaves. And then lastly, try not to use fillets or rounds in sketches. You're much better to do them as features because they are all um, managed under the one dimension. Otherwise, you've got a lot more constraining. And we go back to that first option, which is keep sketches as simple as possible. So let's go back to this model and consider some of the other options um, in relation to sketches. So this model built um, off a primary sketch. Um, as you can see, it's been used. Um, so if we go back to this feature and just edit the profile, you can see that we've got a very complex piece of geometry um, and it's really difficult to sort of maintain that. So if we sort of um, pick this one, um, these two are actually in line. So we can just sort of and just drag that out 
um, but you see there's no connection in there. So ideally what you're looking at doing is just adding in some relationship. So as we said in the um, slide, uh, horizontal vertical is a really good and robust um, option. And again, going back to the idea of making sure that you connect to the right geometry, um, you can exaggerate your uh, motion. So I want to align these two lines here. So, you know, you can go over here, but you can see that it's picking up the horizontal rather than vertical line. So quite often it's easier just to come in and move down to the point that you want. And that ensures that you are maintaining that relationship. Again, you know, sort of coming down and picking up these means that we are connecting the endpoint of this vertical line to the endpoint of this vertical line. And where you may find that sort of thing um, being affected, um, we could say have added rather than having this as a, um, a round feature, we could put it in as a um, element. So we could do a, a um, arc or tangent arc. So if we just come in here and place this, um, so you can see that we have a relationship on there. It's created an endpoint relationship. And then you just sort of say, well, let's um, just come in and we'll maybe make that um, perpendicular. And that just drops it in. And then we can just use our trim tool and just get rid of that. But as I said, you know, if you don't connect it to the right thing, you can see that we've lost our endpoint connection on here. So if we just quickly drop back out of there and do the same thing a little bit more um, structured. When you're building that, if you come down off this line, you know then that when this one deletes, you still have that relationship because often when you come and make edits, it's going to um, cause you some grief later on. So um, just something to be very aware of. Um, likewise, as I said, don't add fillets. If we wanted to sort of have these rounded in here, you know, you can use the um, fillet command in here and just go um, put in a two mil radius and you can quickly go around and, and sort of drop a whole load in there. Um, but the problem with that is that they are all individual um, arcs. So if you wanted to constrain it and, and build that knowledge, you've then sort of got dimension one and go and add an equal sign on, on each of them. Uh, quite cumbersome and um, can take time. So you're much better off to sort of exit out of there. And if you want to add in a um, a round on there, you're much better off to use the round tool and just go in, um, set size, and just go through and, and pick all of those in one go. Um, and then they are all controlled by the one um, value here. Another small area that I want to cover is trying to keep features independent of each other. You never know when a feature is going to get deleted. Um, so whenever you connect to or add to an edge or whatever, um, it's really going to give you problems if that feature is then deleted. So to make your model robust, um, try and use open profiles wherever possible. And the other one that you want to do is avoid reliance on included edges or um, yeah, just connecting to an edge when you're drawing your um, sketch geometry. So this model has some good examples of using open profiles. Um, underneath we have this um, cutout going around here. And um, if we look at that, you can see that um, if we go into the uh, sketch mode, what you have is an open profile. So it's just a profile that is actually connected on this internal point here, but um, it's sort of then governed um, and open so that should things change, it's less likely to fail. Um, likewise with the rib, if we look at the profile on that one, 
um, you know we've sort of connected in on the end here um, it's still an open profile um, but you could just drop that out and drop that connection out and that way it's not linked to the actual geometry so you're sort of less likely to cause problems later on so um, obviously when we come out of here um, being an open profile it sort of gives you the option of which way you want to project that image and we have options here on sort of um, whether we extend it in or not and as you can see that sort of um, builds up quite much. So this final section we're looking at what's um, roughly titled the feature pathfinder so um, some of the things that you can do to help um, anyone else coming in and modifying your model um, you know use the playback to understand how a model is created um, a really good tool in solid edge um, allows you to sort of play um, each feature on top of the other um, every so often um, you can set the time time lag and it does help to understand how the model was generated because not everybody designs the same name features um, this allows you to sort of quickly pull into the area that you're looking for rather than having to sort of just hover over features to try and pick up which one you want because it's not always obvious what it is that it's um, creating um, so going back to the previous slide you know make sure that the features aren't interdependent um, used uh, if you're creating a feature on a parallel reference plane try and build it off um, the principal planes because they are fixed and don't change um, and that means that you can sort of reorder your features um, and, and just doing that um, using the control Z to undo if you need to um, just shows you how independent they are because obviously if you're building on top of something else um, it means that it can't be moved up because it has dependencies on it and the final one don't leave minor errors on features um, I know we all do it we're all rushed um, but it's much easier to fix up those minor errors at the time because you know what's caused it it's easier to fix up if you leave it come back in two months three months down the track um, you know you quite often just leave them and eventually it's going to come back and um, make things a hell of a lot worse as you sort of build errors on errors so yeah most importantly always fix up those minor errors I'm going to use just this different model um, as you can see it's pretty complex and not necessarily that uncommon um, when you have some uh, difficult parts to create um, always going to be hard to come in and edit someone else's model um, person may have left um, they may be busy on another project so it's not always easy to work out how it was built so a great tool in solid edge is the feature playback so it's one of these usually one of these tools up here so um, you just sort of scroll across and find, find what you're after if you don't see it there click on the drop down and it may have just been hidden so as as you can see here it's got hidden and we have the feature playback and you can see it's sort of got um, a set of uh, features listed here so you can start at any one you can just individually um, step through them or you can just hit play and it will just show you sort of how this model was built up so sort of relatively complex and um, you know you can sort of see what's going on rotate it around pause it and um, a really useful tool so um, let's just drop that one out um, also you know as you're looking at it you can sort of see um, each of these features will have a sort of you know defined function um, pocket for whatever cutaway um, but you can sort of see down here how do you know what refers to what um, you know just arbitrary names um, just sort of going in and um, you know you can click on it go F2 and rename it to um, whatever you want it to be and then hopefully 
uh, when you come in and want to modify something, it's going to be a lot easier to find. So, um, you know, going back to that uh, reordering, um, you know, you may need to. Um, someone may have come back and said, we want to sort of modify this feature so it matches this wall here. Um, so if we sort of zoom in, you know, you can sort of see, uh, hopefully that's cut out 15. Um, you know, you can sort of, uh, where are we, cut out 15. And that one there. Um, you can always sort of go in and edit it. Uh, it definitely looks like the one we're after. Um, so um, adjusting it to that one, if we go in sort of edit edit feature, you can see that, um, yep, we've got it, but it's because it's ordered, um, you know, it's been built before the other feature. So um, what are your options? You've got to reorder your um, Pathfinder. So um, we can just sort of then sort of move one to meet the other. So um, I believe this one here is cut out 28. You know, that 29 looks like it could be the thing, but um, if you go in and um, click on edit section, um, you know, it's just that inner cutout. So, you know, you can waste a lot of time just um, trying to find the thing you're after. Um, actually, what we're looking for is this one here. So if we edit that, you can see that, yeah, that's giving us what we're after. Um, and if we come out of here, you know, you can you can see, well, actually, cutout 28 is the one that we want it to go to. Um, so cutout 15 is here. You can see by the numbering that um, someone's used to go to or um, reordered already so um, let's just drag this one down the tree and put it in after say cut out uh, 29 so we can just drop it in here and going back to that very final um, comment don't leave these minor errors they will come back and cause you a lot more grief later on if you don't fix them up right at the start. So hopefully this um, all gives you some insight into some of the things that you can do to build robust models. You're never really going to get something that is 100% bulletproof, but um, you know if you're building with a little bit more intelligence, you're more likely to um, be able to make those changes without too much rework. Um, alternatively, you can look at synchronous, which um, does away with a lot of these errors as well. But um, obviously that has its own limitations and its own um, sort of guidelines, and I may come back and look at that at some other stage. Hopefully this helps, and um, if you've got any questions, please reach out.